Hello everybody. Hi there. Um, and welcome to uh, the first uh, the first video of the Average Tabletop Gamers. Uh, I'm Ben. And I'm Sven. Um, and we are hopefully going to be the, the, the hosts that you uh, stick with over the, the next few months um, while we give you a, a little bit of an idea of kind of how we see tabletop gaming um, and, and gaming in general. And so the first video that we're going to do is something which I've been excited about for a few weeks now. And we've got the Warlord Games Pegasus Bridge 2nd Edition box, which was only released just before Christmas. And not only the 2nd Edition box, we've actually got the Ham and Jam Collector's Edition to unbox. So we're going to unbox this like excited school children. And we've got a little close of cam here that will hopefully work while we're going through this um, so I guess we're going to give it, give you our first impressions uh, obviously this is the second edition of the Warlord games Pegasus Bridge Box I think the, first, the main difference is they've changed some of the models out for the plastic sprues and they've obviously updated the rules uh, the scenario yeah. rules to work with the yeah. second edition of bolt action rules so let's see what we get in this box I mean, first thing is it's the box itself. I mean, look at that. Loads and loads of nice graphics, lots of nice imagery. Um, and there's a, a little bit of history on the back about the Pegasus Bridge uh, mission itself. Uh, it kind of tells you some of the bits and bobs that you're going to get inside here. So, yeah. Let's... Bear in mind, this has been sitting in my house for a few weeks under pain of death that I wasn't allowed to open it. So. I think there should be a fan there. <laughs> Why are you in charge of music? Okay. Ah, good. A box. Um, first impressions. Yeah, box. So what have we got? Go so, well, I think the f we'll, we'll go for this bubble wrap item here. Yeah, we'll move that out of the way for the time being. I believe this is going to be the resin cast um, gun pick, the uh, um, placement for the... I think there's a quick in there, is it? A well, I'm sure there should be. I'm going to have a quick search through for what's supposed to be in here. So, yeah, so we've got a resin cast um, gun emplacement, um, which is really like that. Sorry, I can't remember myself. And we've got a little sandbag emplacement. So, let's see if this actually works. If this works, it'll be a miracle. So, I'll switch to that. So, I hope you can see that there. That's the, uh, the resin cast emplacement. And I'll. So no, I'm doing that one as well. I'll sing the sandbags underneath as well, so you, can, you might be able to see that on that camera there. So, it's really normal, it's, good. Yeah, it's a normal high quality that I've seen from the Warlord resin cast stuff before. Mm. There doesn't seem to be any bubbles, there's no overcast, there's no slip cast to that. And say. There's a little bit of cleanup going to be required, but I think that's par for the course with resin cast. Yeah, same with, uh, same with this as well. Again, yeah. Pretty good nick, straight out of the box. Um, yeah, it's a nice bit of kit, that. That'd be nice based yeah. up with a, a little bit of texture on it. Yeah, no, we like that. So okay. I'll get, so get rid of those. The, what have we got here? That's next in the box. So, aha. Right, so this is the German here MMG team and Major John Howard. So, these so again, are, these are your standard Warlord metal casts. And we've got the... Smallest the German here water sheets. slide decals and the British airborne water slide decals. Uh, let's see if you can. I don't think you're gonna pick those up, I think that's way too bright in that camera there. Yeah, no, nothing maybe on this one. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can show you close on that. There we there. go. So, yeah, so we've got the water slide decals, which I still haven't tackled with me. I've had airborne some yet. really, really good success with them, um, kind of, uh, especially with the, the, the British commando ones. That I've been painting up for for a friend of ours, um, and they've they, they've turned out really really well, um, and yeah, they're really nice and easy to use. So yeah, again, just see if you can see that. Really good quality metal miniatures these. Um, now we've got of course Major John Howard, uh, uh, Big John. Again, let's see if I can. No, I, I really need to tone down the lighting and that. Uh, yeah, your hands too bright my halo so yeah so we've got major john howard which is one of the models that uh 
was included in the box. Obviously, he's going to lead the paratroopers, yeah. the British Airborne. And then the uh, the here MMG team is the 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 Warlord standard one again. It's a it's a nice bit of kit. I've got one myself. Put it together. Looks really nice when it's finished. Um, so that's that one. What else have we got? Oh, paperwork. Let's have a look at this bit of paperwork. So, so this is the Pegasus Bridge scenario booklet, um, which I think it's about a 16-page booklet. Obviously, this isn't standalone, so you do need the main bolt action rules to play this. Um, but yeah, so it's got the some instructions there about modelling the the various bits. We've got a couple of scenarios, um, which I think will take you through the entire. Uh, invasion of the yeah. the Benouville Bridge, I believe it is. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the Pegasus Bridge story, I would recommend you go and watch the classic film The Longest Day. Bridge Too Far. Bridge Too Far is Arnhem. Yeah, it's part of it though, isn't it? No, that's Market Garden. Oh yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, so this is The Longest Day, Pegasus this is the longest Bridge. Day. And bad. you'll get to see Richard Todd it was Richard playing Todd. Major John Howard and Richard Todd, of course, is one of the airmen one of the airborne that went yeah. in on the Pegasus Bridge. So we've got some rules there for night fighting, which I think they may be expanding on the rules that are in the bolt action mm -hmm. main book. Then we've obviously got some guides Sorry. there about the actual plastics that we've got in the... Yeah. construction guides. Uh, some construction guides, all the different parts of the sprues, which I really like about the Warlord plastic kits is the fact that not only do they number all of the parts, but they do give you a comprehensive guide as to what each part Which is, what weapon just, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's certain kits I've had in the past where you get all sorts of little greeblies and widgets and you don't know what they're actually meant to be doing on the actual models. Um, yeah. And we've got some construction guides, so this is obviously a bit of a spoiler alert for... So yeah, we've got the quick 39 anti-tank gun, which is what's going to go in that emplacement. Yeah. And we've got some general unit information there, so we've got some specific information about Major John Howard and the PF teams, the infantry sections and obviously the German infantry that's defending. So that's the standard Pegasus Bridge scenario booklet. Um, on the back. Oh yeah, on the back we've got- On the batch, it, back, batch, on the back is the uh, bolt action play sheet. Um, really good reference. Doesn't take the place of the rules, but you know, if once you've got the rules and you've read the rules, these, these are really, really useful. In our game so far, I think we've been referring to the the one that I got from yeah. the Band of Brothers box quite a lot. Yeah, but much more so than the uh than the main rule book. So what have we got here? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. There we go. Quick thirty nine gun and crew. So again this is our this is what's gonna sit inside that emplacement. And it's a multi part white metal kit. Um slight conk in the barrel but nothing that won't be easily stretched out. So we've also got the gun shield in the barrel. Um, so it looks like three parts of the main gun, we've got the, I guess that's the main gun housing and the, uh, the axle mount and the main breech. Yeah. Um, again, I, there's a bit of cleaning up going to be required on there, but if you've been doing anything with white metal models at all, nothing out of the ordinary. And then we've got three crew members, so a kneeling guy loader, and we've got uh, the spotter with a set of binoculars and then we've got a seated operator try not to be too awkward with this fiddly box um, so yeah then we've got the seated uh, operator on the gun itself now, and it's the 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 multi head the multi heads the war head um, yeah is it war head or figure head figure head figure head that's what it's called the figure head system which I'm a massive fan of um, now that I've done it. I know that there's a uh, a lot of the Warlord kits are, are kind of, especially the white metal ones. That there's very little um, posability of them. You know, they're very static. But the uh, the figurehead system, um, they fit every single model. Um, so I mean, I know for, for for one thing that I've kind of done a bit of swapping and, and stuff between German and British heads and things like this. Especially the British ones, they come with no hats. So do you want to go nice. big box next? Big box. Lovely big, big cardboard, cardboard box. box. Um, I'm guessing this is the plastic. This is going to be our plastic. So I can't remember if I've read exactly what you get in the standard Pegasus bridge box, but that looks like it's a German 
Uh, yeah, that's a that's German, German Grenadiers. And uh, recognise them. So German, German. That's another German, and they're six to a sprue. So there's German, German. So yes, yeah, so it looks like we've got uh, eighteen. Four sprues of Germans and two sprues oh, of British Airborne. I just completely did maths one there. Twenty-four. Twenty-four is the right so number. So twenty-four, and we've got twelve. Twelve um, British. Twelve British Airborne, and including their bases, of course. Yeah. And you've got a large round base there, so which will be for the machine gun. Yep. Yeah. Now again, these. Uh, yeah, these these sprues are—they're a lovely bit of work. Um, you get everything that you need. Uh, they have multiple arm. Uh, I mean, one of the nice things about these compared to the other ones is the uh, all of the arms are set up with weapons in firing positions or carrying positions. So there's no messing about with kind of um, having to put fingers through trigger guards and, and getting your arms white and all that kind of thing. A really nice mix of weaponry. Uh, you've got stens, uh, lots of stens, good and selection fields. Of, it's a good selection of heads as well. So you've got six with the uh, helmet and webbing. Yeah. And then you've got six, six with, with British uh, British berets, yeah. six with Polish berets. And you've got a wounded guy, you've got bandaged got a bandage head. with a bandage on his head. Um, what else have you got on there? There's a Piat. Yeah, we've got a Piat. T. a bugle. Some stens, telescope, binoculars. Yeah, that's a really, really nice little set. Of that fixed bayonet. So there's some good modelling options there. I mean, I've just built a bunch of the plastic um, Falschmiger. Yeah. And the options you get there, even when you're building a full box of the plastic, so like 25 guys, 30 yeah. guys. There's tons of options to actually, and even then you can. They're quite easy to. To switch and swap about and yeah. do some little conversions if, if you're into that kind of thing obviously plastic's so easy to work with and i think that's the, this is one of the these are the main changes i think with the second of the ed um version of pegasus bridge i think in the first edition it was the white metal yeah germans and the white metal british airborne but so these uh i mean this is the the, the german grenadier sprue uh, and again an awful lot of, of modeling capabilities and and changes on here um, head wise you've got uh, what's that seven in helmets uh, two in field caps one in a crusher you've got an unhel uh, an unhatted you've got a spare hat rifles uh, so car 98 um, SDG 44 yeah yeah 44s uh, some Panzer Shreks some mp40s and the mg42s which if you're a german player are phenomenal for that extra dice they are, yeah they are with the hitler's buzzsaw rule they are the nuts um yeah again really really nice set the only thing about these i don't like as much as those is the fact that the uh, weapon arms aren't already connected on a lot of them some of them are um but it's it's much easier when they're all connected in um make just makes it so much simpler oh the system throw bits and bobs away so we've got these are the main plastics in the main box so i think next we're going to get on to it looks like we're going to be it looks the mdf yeah the whole world of mdf so the size of the now what you get from warlord is um all of the mdf sets come from sarissa precision now i've not used any of the sarissa stuff myself i've done a lot of the, the mdf uh, builds over the last a uh, couple of years um, so I have no idea how good the Sarissa stuff is but we'll start with a German bunker looks really nice and simple that's a really nice simple uh, instruction picture there on the front um, and there we go for those of you who are familiar with MDF it looks you know very similar to everything else you're gonna get um, multiple pieces multiple cutouts uh, looks like it goes together really pleasantly um one of the things i do like on this if you see is a double wall construction for a little bit of edit strength yeah yeah i've only one. really started working with the laser cut mdf buildings recently but the ones that i have built have been superb and uh, there's some great tutorials if you check out the terrain tutor he's got some yeah. tutorials about putting together mdf buildings um and some nice little techniques to so you can 
uh, get them out of the actual sprues because obviously these are laser cut so sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to get, get yeah, off the actual wooden so. sprue um, but yeah that's a nice little German bunker and of course nice bit of scenery to have not just for Pegasus Bridge campaign um, just, just in general yeah any kind of Atlantic wall bunker I think that'll be nice for yeah we like that next one we have is uh, the Cafe Gondry Gondry um, yeah very famous uh, first building liberated in France and D-Day there you go history lesson as well and I've had a cup of tea in there <laughs> A good cup of tea, and I met Madame Gondry, who was one of the inhabitants at the time, so that was uh, all very nice. But still, there, still standing. You can go to, um, go to, I believe it's Caen, is how it's pronounced, uh, and you can go there and have a cup of tea in the Cafe Gondry, look out over the replacement Pegasus Bridge. Yeah, so again, you get a nice little construction guide on the front here, um, you get a picture of what it's supposed to look like at the end, and again, like with the other one, the uh. The actual cutouts look really, really good. The uh, the detailing looks a nice depth without being too deep. Um, one of the things I've found with a lot of the MDF stuff is that the, the, the burn-in just for the detailing can be a little bit too deep. So, yeah, so that's the, the Café Gondry. So, again, nice piece of scenery, which I think you could use at any yeah. uh, D-Day onwards game. Um Perhaps for the Alo Alo themed game, we were thinking. Well, exactly. That would be quite good. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to building that one as well. That's a nice one. Now. Ooh, the lovely smell of uh, laser cut MDF. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much cellophane you put it in, it still comes through. Now, this is where it looks like all the money goes. Yeah. Because that <laughs> is an absolute <laughs> beast. There. That the is... bridge itself. There is a lot of sheets of MDF in there. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 sheets of laser cut MDF. Um, there you go, you can see some of it on the back. And a really nice big advert for Sarissa Precision. There you go, Sarissa Precision. We like your work. Um, yeah, the bridge. Um, looks like there's a bit of history there. Some really nice uh, instructions and stuff on how to prepare and how to assemble. Um, yeah, I'm really liking the look of that. There you are. Yeah, so I think that's going to take some building, but it does look like it's multi-pages uh, of instructions to go through. Um, I think that'll be a build that I'll tackle over a few days, possibly with some moral support. Um, a few days, probably a couple of months. Very true. But, again, lovely piece of scenery. Um, and there's a few scenarios in the book, but you know, if you're going to be playing anything, yeah. um, you know, bridges were very important in all of the... Um, the war in general. Well, the war in general, but the D-Day onwards, I think the, the yeah. war for bridges was very important, especially for establishing the beachhead. So any of your games post D-Day, I think is going to be a great piece of scenery, yeah. a great piece of terrain to have. Whew. And bridges, I mean, that's a, that's a, a serious bit of kit. Um, we'll just have a quick look in the big box here. Um, thank you very much, Ronnie S., your Good name work. Drawn out the hat. Uh, and there is a. Oh, that'll be a piece of the quick, it looks like, I think, possibly, is it? There we are. It's a, what appears to be some form of uh, stowage, maybe a couple of sh uh, shell case, shell box. So, there we go. That's that. So, so, that's the first, that's the big box. Look, there's nothing else in there now apart from Ronnie S's business card. So, that is the, so that's the 200 quid yeah. Pegasus Bridge box. Um, so this is the Ham and Jam Collector's Edition box. So this is the £95 upgrade, which I decided to opt for, uh, <laughs> because I don't have enough stuff to build and paint. Now, I appreciate that um, you know the costs for packaging and things like this are, um, are quite ex uh, prohibitive at times uh, and very expensive, but um, you know this is a, a 300 quid kit all in. Warlord, you could probably have done something a little bit better than just a brown, brown box, in my opinion. But you know, I mean, that box is really nice. You could just do something with this one as well. Um, well, we'll see what's inside. I think first. There we go. So, more more plastics, plastics. lots and lots of plastics. There we are. So let's have a quick 
move through these. So it looks like we've got more German infantry. So we can really pad out the German infantry with another. So another three, twenty-four. Yeah, or another eighteen. Another 18 so I think that takes it about. I'm sure uh, I think it's forty-eight on the box. Like that, yeah. um, in the contents of a forty-eight, and you get not airborne to it. So you get the um, commandos, British please. commandos. Uh, who obviously were sent in to relieve mm. the airborne um, and help push in and take the town. Um, so again, looks like we've got f uh, sixteen. Yeah, uh, uh, I think they're sixes as well, or they fives. Six? No, they're fives on those spruce. So you get four standing. Ah, and one yeah, you kneeling. get the kneeling guy. So yeah, they're five. So it looks like a twenty. Twenty um, commandos. Twenty commandos. Uh, again. Nice deal. So these all come with nice backpacks. In a change to the other ones, you just get Bergens. you get unhelmeted heads, and then you get a, a choice of helmets. Whether you want plain helmets or berets. webbing helmets, or at the top there we've got the berries. Um, um, the one thing that, that that disappointed me about the commando sprues is they don't come with cap comforters. Um, I know you can get cap comforters on some of the models, but I would have really liked to have seen a cap comforter uh, option. Um, that yeah, that would have made me happy. Um, but again, they're they're a really nice um, set of, uh, of of bits and pieces that you get on there. Um, some good body poses, uh, some interesting faces, some great mustaches. Um, yeah, they're a, a nice nice little bit of addition there. So next out of the box, go for these bristles. Aha! Is this the our character? Lord model? Love it, uh, Lord Love it, Piper Bill Millen and Brigadier Peter Young. So these are the commando characters. Um, again, really, really nice um, miniatures to mess around with. Um, again, I've, I've painted some of these up already. I think there's a, at least one of those. I think is the um, is a limited edition only in this box, uh, which I think maybe the. Um, I think you can get a Billy Millen and a Lord Love It. I don't know if they're the same no, you, models. Yeah, yeah, you get them in. Uh, so what you've got. So as you can see, oh actually probably, let's go with Piper Billy. So that's the top half of Piper Billy. There you are. And then you have a choice of either a kilt or legs. Um, fabulous. Um, if you know how to paint tartan, uh, please get in touch. Because um, painting tartan. Life's too short. So some lovely character models to go along with the British Commandos. Ah. Now, the bit that I was really excited about, dead livestock. Um, it's one of the things I really like about Warlord um, and kind of how they look at, at, at doing games and the like, is that they will put everything in, and, and dead livestock is obviously something that happens uh, during any conflict. Um, is it nice? No, but does it add that little bit, that little extra touch? Yeah. So, yeah, just a little bit of scene decoration, so... Um Oh, it's multi-part as well, so... Multi-part dead cow. So we've got a cow body with some limbs. And looks like we've got um, a slightly smaller cow. And we have a horse. So there you go. So you can obviously decorate the fields around, uh, obviously, where the gliders landed. Yeah, maybe in an artillery strike if you've, you've, you know, if you've done something like that. Again, just some nice set decoration, I guess. Ah. Um, aha, plastic weapon sprues. Yeah, they? these are the commando weapon sprues. Um, now, what you've got, you've got three of those. Have a look at that. Now, if you can see it. Um, again, really nice selection of weapons. You've got Brens, two-inch mortars, a couple of Stens, uh, some Thompsons, um, Webley revolvers, shovels, pickaxes, uh, and a Piat. Uh, Piat gun there, grenades, uh, ammunition pouches and the like. Um, again, really nice. It's just that awkwardness of trying to stick those into various hands um, to get them to fit. So, oh, more things on bases. There we are. So that looks like another machine gun team. Yeah, this looks like it's the that's a ger another German machine gun team. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a, an MG42 static team. Um, which if you know anything about bolt action being able to field two of them 
uh, at any one point would is, is, is you know is devastating. But yeah, that's the the, the same kit again. Um, yeah, so obviously there were scenarios uh, for being able to field two of them. Uh, obviously, there must be the ability to field two. Yeah, so we've got the gunner, a loader, and a spotter for that yeah. team. And um, it's quite a nice little model as well. It's, it's different from the plastic MG42, so it looks a little bit beefier. It's on a different, so it's got a different um, like stock for it and yeah. a different tri like mount for it that way. That way, yeah. Yeah. So it's got the full extended tripod, and I'd say it's got the the figure, the figure head as well. Again. So we've got a couple of different heads there, which we can sort around between our gunner and our loader. Or between any of the German figures in general. Um, here we've got, uh, as you get with a lot of Warlord boxes, you get the, the damage markers, the grey, black and red. And uh, also there's some more uh, water decals in there. That's the Commando one. Uh, you can just see it there behind uh, Sebastian. So thank you, Sebastian. Again, cracking job. We haven't found any bits missing yet. Uh, so what's next in here? Flat your bag. That looks like another MG42 team. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they really want to make it difficult for the Allies in this, uh, as it should be. Yeah, so that's the uh, second MG42 team, exactly the same as the one we just looked at. I'm guessing that that... Uh, oh, is it a third MG42 team? It looks like there's a few more bits in there. Uh, no, that's uh, another MG42 team. So... Lots of MG42 teams. Oh dear for the Allies. <laughs> and lots of dice. Lots and lots of lots dice. Lots and lots of so dice. So it looks like we've got some bubble wrap there. Oh. 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 So, bubble wrap. Ah, right. Things in bubble wrap. So this, I think, may be part of the... So you get a Marder 1, which is the Lorraine Schlepper. The <laughs> Lorraine Schlepper. Schlepper, I believe is the pronunciation. So, again, nice little resin cast... Um, model well resin and metal so just quickly on that if you are uh, into your bolt action and things like this they've got a 25% uh, discount on all resin tanks at the moment on their website depending obviously when you see this um, but as of today which is the 28th yeah the 28th is going right. on today um, will be for another few days at least so really good way to get hold of some some really nice little uh, little resin tanks so nice little resin and white metal kit so we've got the barrel again figureheads we've got the a loader and a spotter mm. um, and all the, re the the relevant parts of the martyr so a nice little artillery addition to yep. bulk out what you get in the main box yeah um, and let's face it who doesn't like a little, nice piece of uh, armour little, little tanks uh, what else have we got in here as part of that you get uh, the, the the game card, uh, which has the rules and stuff on the back. I really like these that they've started putting in with the the boxes, the even with the plastic kits, the model kits that Warlord do. Um, nice little reference card that you get for the vehicles. Yeah, yeah, really good. Uh, oh, paperwork. Uh, so that's the how to build your commando sheet. Uh, again, it's a really nice bike, nice thing. Um, different variants of how to do some of the bodies oh didn't want that uh, and again the complete instructions of what's on each sprue so the weapons and the bits and bobs so indispensable so we're gonna go bubble wrap again more bubble wrap so i think this is possibly yeah this is more in placement i think Ooh, it's like it's, it's like christmas it is like christmas so we've got looks like we've got yeah more sandbag and placement so we've got a little square and these will be, I'm guessing, for the MG42 teams. Yeah. Given that we have six more little sandbag emplacements. Um, really like these. Uh, the attention to details is, is superb. Um, he, all of the sandbags have got seam lines. There's one here that's got a bullet hole and is leaking sand, which is such a, I don't know if you can see it, just there, if I get it really close. There you go. See, it's got a bullet hole there, and it's leaking sand down there. Um, yeah, fabulous detail, um, and really good casting as well. Like, you'd ex you know, one or two little air bubbles, 
an air spots in there, but they're the very small. Um, and yeah. again, I mean, um, you know, easy to get around. They're easy to fill, but yeah, great detail. And again, with these kind of little bits, these are great if you're if you haven't got your own table yet and you're building scenery up. These little things are great just because you can base them up, use them in any of your games, move them yeah. around, switch them. Take off. them with you. Um, you know, if you if you just got yourself a, a big case, something like that, just dedicate one layer of it to uh, to take in little bits of scenery with you. Uh, it can make a, a massive difference to your game. Um, so we've got uh, a few bases. Uh, they're the standard Warlord uh, 25s, uh, 25 mils, and they're to go obviously with the Germans. Interesting. Um, Plastic dragon's teeth and tank, tank traps. traps. Tank traps, there you are. And we've got some, it looks like we've got the, I forget what they're actually called now, the, the crossbeam um, iron tank traps, and. Big dragon's teeth, small dragon's teeth. Yeah, so there's an array of different types of tank traps there, so again. They'd be great based up and you know use those all over the place to uh, flesh out your battlefield a little yeah. bit with some yeah. nice terrain. I've played quite a bit of bolt action now. There's nothing more frightening than uh, an armoured column that's got nothing in the way of it to stop it coming down straight into your face. Um, so yeah, so we like that. Oh, more MDF things. Now, I like the look of this. Again, nice big Sarissa Precision advert there. Um, telegraph poles. Um, don't know how many is in the set, but nice little addition. Um, looks like there might even be some some road signs. Yeah, right looks like there. some signs and some, some just some little bits and bobs. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a couple of telegraph poles, and uh, in fact, let's just. Oh, well, we're opening one. Oh, we're doing it. <laughs> so we should have had the whole music prepared so there we go yeah so it looks like we've got uh, two single telegraph poles two double telegraph poles and then and then some signs oh, I like these uh, this this really really thin MDF nice card it's isn't it? yeah I think that's so you can actually paint them and put paint them on. the signs on yeah, so there you go. So you've got a card sheet there. Um, yeah, so they're the actual, if you can see on the instructions, they're the actual, the signs yeah. to fit onto the signposts, which is really That's nice. That's a really nice little feature, that. And now I'm going to smell of MDF for the rest of the night. That's all right, it could smell worse. Yeah, another excellent little addition there for me. And more stuff to dress the table with more, more stuff to dress the table and I think we're down to the last bit now and the last piece is again with the beautiful Sarissa Precision advert and this is our MDF and this is the Horsa Horsa Grider there we go see that a little bit closer um, beloved of airborne forces during the war um, and this should Make an interesting kit again, an interesting addition to the uh, to the battlefield. Um, yeah, fascinating, uh, fascinating vehicle in its own right. Um, if I remember right, it was kind of designed to split apart on landing. Yeah, so it it it's got I think two pieces that are supposed to break in the um, in the fuselage, allowing it to absorb and obviously for the troops to get out. However. There was a few flaws in them in it. I think a lot of the time they would still the kit at the feet. And mm. that's why the Pegasus Bridge mission, if you're up on your history, the I think only had one or two working piats because the piats were all stored in the floor. Yeah. And when it crashed, they all bent. Yeah. Uh, there are also stories of um Allied or American uh commanders who were fearing for the safety and so armoured the floor, which meant the gliders went nose down yeah and obviously did more damage but they could carry uh, sections of men jeeps um, again great piece to have on the table especially given the nature of the pegasus bridge missions where they were going in in these horse gliders um and again a nice little objective piece to fight around mm. um so again a lovely piece of the uh 
MDF Razor Cut from Sarissa Precision. Uh, and I shall look forward to building this one uh, and painting it because this will take me back to back to the many many days ago, thirty odd years ago, in my use of painting and building airfix kits. Yeah. Um, where it all started. So I think that's an empty box. Now. That's that is an empty box. Um, yeah, there's nothing else in there. So that is the is is basically is the ham and jam uh, upgrade uh, and second edition Pegasus Bridge box. Um, yeah, really, really interesting um, set of bits and, and pieces. I feel that they've put in there. Um, just you know, just in in terms of some of the scenarios and and bits that you get as part of it. Um, you know, and and how to put these, uh, how to put the scenarios together. Um, you know, it's really it's it's quite pleasant that they've actually put things in doing this one for you know glider assault to there um to make use of, of all the bits that there are in here um yeah i think it's it's a a, a really really nice yes yeah, a really nice setup in fairness yeah i think there's going to be a good few months of building and painting ahead of me but i think once we get this all done uh i'll set up a table and we might just do a quick once it's all built Mm. Um, guide through it all obviously with a caveat that I'm not a master model builder nor a master painter <laughs> um, but I'll do my best and uh, we'll see how we can get on with the uh, getting it on a table and just showing you what you actually get in the box once it's all unpacked and built um, I know that between us we've got forces that will all accompany this already yeah. but even if you didn't if this is your first box you're going to get the best part of it. In fact, you're going to get pretty much, I think, over a thousand points of um, German. Certainly gear. a thousand points of um, German. Bird, and yes. you'll get enough in the British Airborne and the Commandos that you wouldn't even need to pad them out with too much extra stuff to no. build yourself a nice little no. force. Um, given that the paras at the the Airborne themselves are fairly stripped down in terms of what kit they can take, yeah. um, you don't need much, but they are effective. Um, but it's, it's yeah, it's uh, as Sven said, it's a it's a really good way uh, into playing bolt action because um, you do get everything that you need. Um, probably a few bits, a few, a few more bits than you're ever going to use, but but yeah, in a, in a lot of terms, you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of really nerdy nice kit to uh, to have a play around with. So that's been the unveiling, unboxing and mm. quick walk through the contents of the second edition Pegasus Bridge box set from Warlord and the Ham and Jam upgrade box. Um, seeing it all spilled out on the table and going through everything bit by bit, I think it's a I'll say a worthwhile investment. Um, yeah. I think I'm certainly going to get money's worth and just in terms of the models um, and the scenery. And I say the all the models are going to go uh, into either bulking out the forces that I've already got or they'll probably even spur me on to, to buying a few more bits and pieces to build out like the flesh out the commandos or the airborne yeah I'd certainly I'd, I mean I'd been I'd, I'd certainly look at uh, kind of fleshing out the airborne but all of these bits sure. like the, the dragon's teeth the sandbag uh, yeah. the um, that Just actual quick the 39 emplacement yeah yeah I think we'll all basically get built and painted up straight away and get added to the board before we even play with the bridge uh, because they're all lovely little bits of scenery mm. um, and even just the, 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 the scattering of scenery we've already got on the table just makes the board jump to life a bit more so um, all these little bits especially since they are based on historical yeah. places like the Cafe Gondry and the Pegasus Bridge I think they're going to be really nice in the games um, so that's it I mean if you like what we're doing here uh, stick something in the comments below that's um, nice share like subscribe as all the cool kids say that's um, the uh, way to social media uh, domination and which is where we're going we will hopefully be back with either some more unboxings or we might do some game reviews or we may do some other bits if you've got any ideas if there's anything you want to see whether it be bolt action uh warhammer 40k age of sigma necromunda blood bowl whatever's uh, x-wing um i know we're, we're kind of uh, a lot of us are building up to the release of Star Wars Legion uh, in the new year, uh, so we'll definitely have an unboxing of that when we uh, when we get a hold of the base set. Um, yeah, and if there's if there is anything that you want to uh, 
see from us anything that you want us to to kind of look at talk about uh any issues that you've had with gaming or gaming groups um if you're a member of a gaming group and just want us to give you a shout uh or your uh an flgs a friendly local gaming store and you want us to give you a shout as well uh feel free just get in contact either below or at our fabulous facebook slash email address and the like when we have them I'll put those in the comments below. We have an email address. Uh, Facebook will be coming soon. But until then, uh, thank you for sticking with us and watching this. And we'll see you very soon. Good night.